Hi, I'm Jonathan Bromley, one of the trainers and consultants at Dulos, and I'm going to talk today about making sense of transaction level modeling in OVM. I guess you will have come across the open verification methodology for building test benches using System Verilog and its object-oriented programming features. And if you've started to look at that, particularly if your background is in traditional programming in Verilog using modules and ordinary connections between modules, you may well find that the transaction level modeling technology is a little surprising. So what we're going to do in this material is to take a slightly closer look at how all that works. If we start by looking at what happens in a regular Verilog design, this will be of course so familiar that you've seen it a thousand times and you don't want to see it again, but nevertheless there are some things that are going on here with regular Verilog connections that are really interesting and we can learn a lot from them when we're building test benches. So here I've got two simple Verilog modules connected together by three connections. And you can see that the sender module over on the left has an output called Y, and that's connected to a wire called data. And then when that wire called data reaches the other receiver module on the right, it's connected to a port called D. Nobody cares that the wiring and the ports have got different names. And indeed, you can write the sender module entirely in terms of its ports. You don't need to worry about the name of the wire it's connected to. Far less do you need to worry about what other modules it's connected to. That's a really powerful piece of decoupling. It means that you can write each of the modules in isolation without any concern at all for precisely how it's going to be used. You write the module not against the remainder of the system, but against an interface defined by the ports of the module. And that's a really powerful way of keeping modules separate and breaking down the design into manageable pieces. Can we do the same thing for the even larger programming problems that we meet when we're trying to build a System Verilog test bench? And of course the answer is yes we can. Let's make a start on a test bench by taking a look at a very simple test bench designed to test the receiver module. That's our device under test over on the right. On the left we recognize that we're going to have to generate data transactions, activity on those three connections. And so it's a pretty smart move to write a task to encapsulate the pin-wiggling activity that we need to do just that. So over there is our task. You can code this in many different ways. We've used some System Verilog programming constructs here just to make it more interesting. But anyway, it's a straightforward business of writing the pin-wiggle activity driven by a piece of data that's coming into the task to decide what's being conveyed, the transaction. In the bottom right hand corner of this test bench you can see that thanks to our task we can now write the test bench strategy, the stimulus generator, in a very straightforward way, simply calling the send task every time we have some new data to generate. It's a very nice way of packaging a simple test bench. Unfortunately, it doesn't scale very well to larger problems because if you want to incorporate that piece of test bench code into a bigger, more complex test bench, you probably have to rip it all out and start again. And so the test bench community, the verification community, has moved very much in favor of using um, System Verilog classes to do its construction of test benches. So let's take a look at how you might build such a test bench using classes in System Verilog and probably using the open verification methodology OVM. Over on the left, you can see a class which is designed as a data generator. It takes responsibility for choosing the stream of data, the sequence of data values that's going to be used to exercise the device under test. It doesn't want to worry about the details of pin wiggling. It's only concerned with a stream of data. Over on the right, you can see a bus functional model class, and it takes responsibility for generating the correct pattern of pin wiggles that's needed for each individual data item. So we've got a separation of concerns already. That's very good because it means we can write those two classes independently and reuse any one of them on another project. However, we do have a slight problem. And the slight problem is, how do we get the data generator to communicate its intent to the bus functional model, to say to the bus functional model, please send this data item for me? Well, we can do it rather easily, but unfortunately it's very easy to do it wrongly. Here's the wrong way of doing it. If we ask the data generator to find out where the bus functional model lives, and carefully call the send method in the bus functional model object, we get a piece of code like the one on the page here. 
and it's no good to us because it means that the data generator has to be rewritten for each new test bench that you ever build. That's no good. We need to find a way of making the data generator completely reusable and independent of its environment. So here's how we can do it using the TLM, transaction level modeling technology, that's built into OVM. Instead of trying to reach out of itself into another object to call the send function, our data generator now gives itself an instance of a TLM blocking put port, a port, a mechanism for getting its function call out of itself and into another module somewhere else. There are many different kinds of uh, TLM port provided in the OVM methodology. We've got a blocking put port here. There are a bunch of others that we can talk about another time. So once we've provided the data generator with a port, all it needs to do is call the put method of that port and it's correctly given away its data to whoever cares to listen. But of course that isn't the whole story. We now need to put the test bench together. Let's take a look at how we might do that. The data generator has a port that allows it to assume that somebody else has provided the put method that it needs to call. Over on the right hand side, the bus functional model has that put method. It actually provides the, the real implementation of the method. But of course, it then has to give away that method to other objects in the test bench. It does that using the complement of a port known as an export. So the port allows the data generator to call a function that's implemented somewhere else. The export allows the bus functional model to give away its implementation of the function so that it can be used by somebody else. Once you've done those two things, you simply need to connect the port and the export together so that OVM can then take responsibility automatically for redirecting the data generator's put method call over to the put method implementation in the BFM. It's all ready to go in OVM. All of those port and export objects are already defined for you. The connection mechanism is already there for you to use. All you need to do is put the ports and exports into your classes and make the connections as you need. Of course, we don't have time to look at the full details of this and exactly how you'd code it. There's a, an example that goes along with this video on our website at www.dolos.com together with a whole bunch of other information about TLM, about OVM and other verification topics. And indeed, you can also find on our website details of all the training courses and project services that we offer across the whole spectrum of design and verification technologies, including many different languages and methodologies.